1978 Underground Comic Book Yao Comics number two. And this trip from 1997 kind of illustrates the point. So if you and Griffey are entering the amusement park, <clears throat> at the top it says the entrance to Pirates Cove Amusement Park, Ocean City, Maryland. Griffey looks up at the banner overhead and says, look, Sippy. Sippy says, my copyright is saying. <laughs> the second panel, Griffey says, no, 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 sir. Don't you remember? We looked into that. Turns out you can't copyright a saying unless the words are made up. So he says, so I can't pursue legal remedies with Howard Johnson, Garfield, Pirate's Cove, and a thousand other imitators? To which Griffey responds, no, but I, don't you feel proud that you first uttered such a popular phrase and presented the gift of laughter to millions around the globe? So he says, I want a free corner. <laughs> Well, I never did make millions licensing. Are we having fun yet? Because indeed you cannot copyright a phrase. <clears throat> but at least I made it into Bartlett's familiar quotations. There I am at the bottom left, wedged between Joni Mitchell and George Lucas. Not bad company. And I think it flows kind of nicely on the page here, especially if you read the entries above and below. <laughs> Joni Mitchell above me. We are stardust, we are golden, and we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. Are we having fun yet? May the force be with you. <laughs> of course, not only the city's For instance, accept provolone into your life. Never got beyond this postcard. Laundry is the fifth dimension. And one of my favorites, if you can't say something nice, say something sort of listening. I'm trying right now to push once again all life is a blur of Republicans and me, but it might be too obvious. I may be really, really lucky, maybe in my senility. I'll have the great fortune to resemble the old guy on the right here. <laughs> and just not care anymore about the answers to life's unanswerable questions. Thank you very much.
felt I was let off the hook. I have gotten the occasional email over the years saying, you know, our child has a mental problem and you're making fun of people like that. And all I can say is, uh, I'm sorry that it's a comic strip. And I, I have no intention of mocking or making fun of anybody um, any more than Picasso did when he, you know, turned people into cubistic faces. It's just a comic strip. What size are your um, my daily strips, yeah. five and one eighths by thirteen. Good point. Yeah, especially today when they shrink down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I was just going to say that we miss a lot. Well, we really like the scene in the large too. We miss a lot. Yeah. Well, it, it, not not to be mercenary, but if you buy the books. Or look at the books, read them in a bookstore. Um, there are one. <laughs> I really, when I do a daily strip, I'm really thinking this is going to be on page 92 of my next book. <laughs> this is going to only be in the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. The, the th apostrophe. I noticed you don't read it that way. What is the significance of that? It's something I inherited from Little Lulu comics. I got two things from Little Lulu. Just, just indelibly imprinted on my brain that I don't seem to be able to control. Zippy's yow expression comes from Lil Lulu and TH apostrophe. Some people get very annoyed with that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, back. Uh, I, I really enjoy seeing uh, uh, landmarks in, in Maryland and Baltimore and Zippy Scripps. Uh, what's, what's your connection with Baltimore and Maryland in general? Uh, um, if there is any. Well, aside from the fact that I think it's you know a terrific city in every way, you know, just great. I mean, you know, I came into the train today, and the first thing you see is Formstone. Do you know that? <laughs> you see the row houses instantly. And it, it's just a funky, beautiful city, um, relatively untouched, you know, compared to most big cities in terms of urban removal. Um, and the other connection is that I, I have a lot of readers here. I've been in the sun for a long time, and I get a disproportionate number of <laughs> photographs and emails by Baltimore and Baltimore area people. So that's partly why a lot of Baltimore locations pop up. Yeah. Can you tell us some of your favorite um, strips or cartoons of um, today, or uh, for that matter, your least favorite? Well, it's a short list. Um, I feel kind of lost on the comics pages. I don't, you know, comics, the only comic strips are at a very low level of uh, accomplishment, I think, today. Although they still, a new one will crop up and be interesting. Um, which, there's one called, um, is it called Lilo, L-I-L-O? -L -L Anybody remember that? It's a kid's strip. It's very funny. It just started a year ago. Uh, I like the one panel daily Bizarro. Grades. I think his sense of humor is a bit derivative from underground comics, but that's not a bad thing. I read Doonesbury every day. I still think it's great. I was incredibly depressed to learn many years ago that Gary Trudeau never has drawn Doonesbury, except when he did it for the Yale paper. So we literally stopped drawing Doonesbury in about 1971. But he does write it, and he doodles it, and he sends it to Kansas City in some some little guy draws it. Um, I very embarrassedly once wrote him telling him how great I thought the artwork had gotten. <laughs> <laughs> in the 80s, he did a series of ships where he went inside Reagan's brain. Do you remember that? It was great. And the artwork was incredible. And he had literally nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I read. I read Family Circus every day. <laughs> family Circus. Well, yeah. uh, Family Circus is, has something in common with Nancy in the sense that it's easier to read it than to not read it. 